Before we begin the video, I'd like to give a big shout out to our most recent Patreon supporters, Jeremy Dalby and Carl Lee. Thank you all so much for your support, and if you want to support us on Patreon, feel free to click the link in the description down below, and we will see you there. Thanks again. Well, everybody, um, there are games that defy expectation, games that defy belief, and then there are games that just make you go, what the hell was that? Um, for most people out there, Fallout 76 was one of those games, but Chad over here actually has a lot of fun playing Fallout 76. I like it. I mean, I'm not anywhere near like some crazy level or done a bunch of stuff in the game i got a sniper rifle i go around i shoot mutants okay <laughs> I'm well often starving to death. <clears throat> well the thing with you chad is your first impression of it was after the majority vast majority of the bugs were fixed i got it three weeks after it came out yeah, by then a lot of the bugs yeah. had been fixed. I got it like three weeks after it, it came out. It still has some. It. it still has some problems, but overall, it's overall it's a better game now. It is a yeah. lot better of a game. But when it first launched, and there was a day one patch of fifty one gigabytes. Crazy. No joke, fifty one gigs. Yeah. And then you started the game up, and it was just like, what the hell? Wait. What's going on? What? What? No! No, I've been booted from, from games for no reason. I've had glitches where I'm falling through the map. and I've had plenty well, of BS happen while I'm playing the game. Yeah, well, anyway. Mm, that's undeniable. A anyway, the, the, the thing is, it's not just the game that was the problem. It's Bethesda's management of the game situation and also with... The other things surrounding it, such as merchandise and stuff like that, mm -hmm. Bethesda has managed horribly. Such as like straight up lying to people and then straight up being rude as fuck to their <clears throat> fans and telling them to get over it and shit like that, basically. Yeah, and... It's basically it's, essentially like pretty short of like what Epic did to me, which is essentially tell the fans to go fuck themselves. Paragon. Yep. Paragon. <clears throat> that was... A whole thing. and For anybody that doesn't know, the reason I don't support the Epic's Game Store is different from the reason that other people don't support the Epic's Game Store. Because Paragon was a game that I paid $60 for a disc copy of. Then they canceled the game midway through after just running it into the ground and not listening to a single word their fans said about it. And uh, just basically they had Fortnite at that point. So they're like, you know what? Fuck this multiplayer game. Like, we have Fortnite. We don't need this shit. So they shut it down and they were like... We will, however, promise to give everyone who bought the game a refund for their money. I was like, all right. So I went to the website, and I put in for my refund. They emailed me back, and they're like, where's your receipt? And I'm like, for a game that came out two years ago? I was like, I don't still have it. And they're like, we got to have your receipt, or we can't give you a refund. And I was like, you said everyone who bought the game would get a refund. You can tell that I made my account when the game released in early access before the game was free. You know how old my fucking account is on this game. I have shit in this game that proves that I bought the fucking game. You can look at it and tell. And I was like, why would I have a receipt for a game that was two years old? And they're basically like, go fuck yourself. Wow. So, fuck and Epic. If they ever want to give my 60 bucks back for Paragon, plus like the 15 to 25 extra I spent on like in-game uh, items and shit, like, you know, cosmetics and stuff, then I'll give them money again. Until then, they can go fuck themselves. That's right. Because that's what they told me to do. Well... I think every one of us out there has had an experience with a game company effectively shafting us. Yeah. 2K. And 2K. WWE uh, 2K18? Yeah. When it came out on the Switch, you can't even play the game. Nope. The game doesn't run on the system. Nope. And they sold it. Mm-hmm. That's ridiculous. I bought it. Mm -hmm. I bought the gold edition of it. And it yep. is absolutely wrecked. You it's can't garbage. Play a single match. It's garbage. You can't. It lags way too much. It lags on the entrances to the ring. Mm -hmm. Well, it's because the it's because the system isn't meant isn't meant to run the game at full specs. And they knew that, and they sold it. And they don't care. And they don't care. Yeah. So 
if you all have uh, if you all have been screwed over by a company out there, a video game company, you know, list them down below and you know tell us your horror stories. I mean, yeah. honestly, we're all ears on this stuff because we like talking about this stuff. But anyway, internet historian, uh, the amazing bastion of investigative internet journalism that he is, dug into the Fallout seventy six debacles that occurred with Bethesda and made a video about it called "The Fall of seventy six. And, yeah, I guess with no further ado, let's jump into it. This is The Fall of 76 by Internet Historian. Here we go. this tape, it means that everyone is dead, <clears throat> or working at a different office. How did this happen? Well, I'll tell you. Buckle up, buckaroos. Today's lesson is the misfired launch of Fallout 76. June 2018. It began with everyone getting just a little hyped up. Have we waited long enough, guys? Oh, God, yes, we have, Todd. I think we have. Fallout 76, Bethesda's biggest game yet. My God, it was exciting. And they promised we'd know more at E3. E3 hype time. The press conference. 16 times the detail. 16 times the detail. All new rendering, lighting, and landscape technology. Four times the map size. It is four times the size of Fallout 4. And it's our biggest one yet. My god, it was exciting. I want to say something real quick, guys. We did a reaction, a live reaction, <clears throat> to uh, Bethesda's E3 panel. We expressed doubt that Fallout 76 would be ready. And that Fallout 76 would be playable. And everyone. <clears throat> and when I say everyone, I don't mean, you know, one, like one one hundredth of the comment section. One, you know, you know, one quarter, one third, one half, you know, two thirds, a quarter. Pretty much everyone in the comment section shit on us for being critical and having the thought that this would not be ready by launch time. And we concluded that we're excited to see if it'll actually work, and if it does work, we'll give it a shot. But people didn't like that. People were just like, how come you're not hyped for this? How come you're not excited for this? How come this? How come that? And I'm like, because Bethesda has diminishing returns on their on their product ever since Fallout 4 I wish 4 came I had have been there so I could have told everybody, like, how come you're not hyped for this? Because where's my fucking Elder Scrolls 6? You had yours last. Fuck off. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. It's not fair. It's our I turn, like Fallout. bastards. Okay. Fallout's great. Elder Scrolls Online was a bunch of fucking bullshit. It was. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's that. that's the other thing, too. That's when I, I expressed criticism saying that when they usually take their intellectual properties online or MMO style, it usually doesn't work out well. Case in point, Elder Scrolls Online. And for the first year and a half, it was a buggy piece of shit that you couldn't even but play. But also the gameplay that in general, familiar. the way that they set it up, yeah. was more World of Warcraft than it was Elder Scrolls. Yeah. And that's fucking bullshit. It is. It's not that way in Fallout 76. It No, it it's isn't. Not. And if they would have had gameplay like they had in Fallout 76 on Elder Scrolls Online, and it was like an actual Elder Scrolls game with MMORPG things going on but still stayed true to the fact that you could just no. play the game like a fucking elder scroll i do game. think they fixed that later actually. they did they did because yeah. they, like when i played it system. like i played it really late only for a little bit and it felt like an elder scrolls game to me. they updated the combat yeah, system in elder scrolls <laughs> online now, but, but people but, play it now and like it now i think it might be okay now it is, but when it, it is came now. out it was pretty shit yeah so. but either way like this. whenever we whenever we stated this Everyone shit on us and said that we're, you know, we're just, we're, we're stupid. You know, we're anti-Bethesda fanboys and this and that. 
And to those people right now who said all that shit, I have one thing to say. How smart do you How feel? you like me now? <laughs> Sit on it and rotate. Eat my whole entire ass. All 12 acres of it, you sons of bitches. 12 acres. <laughs> That's all I got to say. Moving on. <laughs> November 14th, 2018. The game goes live with a day one patch of 50 gigabytes. For fuck's sake, I'll see you tomorrow. But once that's downloaded, people start logging into the hellscape of mm-hmm. Fallout 76. And oh dear lord, they never fix the bugs. No. And there are so many of them. Goodbye world, goodbye necks, goodbye body, goodbye heads, bugs, bugs, bugs everywhere. Server Unti- crashes, game crashes, ah. old bugs imported from Fallout 4. Use more than one nuke at a time, server's dead. Texture's far too texturous, an all-consuming void. Airlock 307. Can't pick up stuff, can't stop asserting dominance with a T-pose. Frame rate problems, screen tear problems, getting too swole, getting underneath the map, getting attacked by invisible enemies, spawning too many enemies. Kinda speaks for itself. Spawning too many god rays. Also, your camp resets up every session, and sometimes it goes underwater. Holotapes randomly play static, but too many holotapes mean none of them will play. Enemy AI is far more A than I. Animation is broken, <laughs> surprise, floating objects, and a traveling merchant. <clears throat> just to name a few. Joseph Anson has a great video that documents just the ones that he found personally. That video is three hours long. Mm. Uh, Christ it almighty. Error CE348780. Can corrupt your data and force you to reinstall the game and console operating system. A few PC players had their computers brick entirely. Mm-hmm. Also, when the date rolled over Jesus since 1st Christ. of January 2019, the nukes in the game stopped working altogether. Yep. No one thought it prudent to program in other years in an always online game. And a few players were straight up logging into other people's accounts. This guy had a level 78 character that was randomly replaced with a level 8 character. But this just said they couldn't do anything about it. <laughs> now, many players are not thrilled with this game, and they want Bethesda to know that. And they want everyone else to know that too. But Bethesda owns the platform. Is Fallout 76 fun? Yes, it is. Banned for racism. Thread locked. They had no direct outlet for their yep. rage. The only solution was to put a torch to everything else. Reddit. Twitter. Bethesda's other games on Steam. <laughs> the backlash was immense. But surely level heads would prevail. The reviewers would come out and say that the game isn't so bad. Oh dear lord, they hate it. <laughs> this is so sad. Despacito, play Country Roads. And the YouTube community had this to say. It's really f***ing boring. Ah, could barely bring myself to play it in order to finish this review. Uh, no one on staff wants to play any more of this video game. I'm not going to subject myself to another 20, 30 hours of this fucking mess. In short, Fallout 76 is morally, technically, and creatively bankrupt. The mods on Bethesda forums were working overtime. The mods on Reddit almost gave up. Look, I'm not saying that some people didn't enjoy and have fun with this game. But what I am saying is that the Metacritic was really funny to read. So what happened? Well, it came out that development was hugely rushed. The deadlines were tight. Too tight. (laughs) Plus, this wasn't Bethesda's A-Team. It's actually a relatively inexperienced division based in Austin, and the scope of the game kept getting bigger. We're gonna need distant weather systems Hey Todd, I stayed, I stayed up all night, night and I just We're finished. We're gonna need 16 times the detail. Please, Todd, no more. We're gonna need four times the size of Fallout 4. That and they were trying to patchwork the old Bethesda creation engine into a multiplayer framework. Yeah. What else could you expect? That's why I give my kids Fallout 76. The fool. <laughs> oh. Now, Bethesda could tolerate the bugs and Take the bad reviews and the irate players. But what they couldn't tolerate were the exploits. Um, 
Infinite inventory, infinite invisibility. The frame rate was tied to the game speed, so people were going a lot faster than they should. So hard for more items, infinite cash, and yep. infinite duplication, yep. unlimited XP, unlimited new game. The new play codes were unencrypted, and you could wall clip into the quest room. Mm -hmm. And someone was given the curse of infinite invincibility. Naturally, this can really mess with other players' online experience. Jesus! So Bethesda was ready Level 260. with the ban hammer. And a blindfold to wildly flail around and take down anyone who happened by. But Bethesda wasn't satisfied with just banning them. No, they're a progressive company with big ideas. <laughs> they wanted to give a road to redemption. So support sent out this email to players caught cheating. We would be willing to accept an essay on why the use of third-party cheat software is detrimental to an online game community. That's right. 500 words on why you're a very naughty boy, and they may just give you your account back. That's but kind of funny. A couple of days later, the mocking from news outlets caused them to reconsider this approach. <laughs> One more exploit. In all the Bethesda games, there's a dev room. Every item in the game yep. is kept here. Security has to be top notch because otherwise, someone could just waltz in and take all of the best items of the game, and it would be an absolute disaster. Yep. Well, shit. Of course, Bethesda wasn't equipped to deal with the issue. People started flooding in, taking the best items in the game, then selling those items on a black market of sorts. <laughs> At first, they tried the usual hear Persona 5 music. Banning people who had some of the best items in the game. You spent 700 hours just to get the best gun? Die, cheater. Next, they put in a system where players would get tagged if they ever entered the room, and they banned those players. That wasn't much better because people would just start using Smurf account. Get in quick with a level one account. Get all that good shit. Then get the fuck out. Then use a duplication glitch to get a ton more of those items. Then transfer that stuff to your main account and you're good to go. Bethesda then takes out this level one and calls it mission accomplished. Yep. And you've just beaten the game. So the problem continued. Bethesda is running out of ideas to solve it. There's a lot of speculation in the media and among the players about how exactly people are getting in, but no one except for the exploiters knows for sure. That said, Bethesda needs to act fast before it ruins the economy of the game. So they wrote another email and sent it out to the Smurfs. <clears throat> uh, hello, Cheetah. Do you want to tell us how you did it and we might unban you, please? Should we not get back from you, the account will simply remain suspended. Yes. It's not known whether this That right really right. happened. But from what I've seen, it's still possible to get into the game. Nice try, Tom. November 22nd, 2018. Just a week after the release, the game goes on discount. From $60 to $40. To $35. To $30. You can find it for $15 on eBay. And in Germany, they're straight up giving it for free when you buy a PlayStation controller. Also, some stores are just zip tying it to other products. But to Bethesda, it's worth selling the thing at a price close to zero, because it brings people into the Atomic Shop, which is where the real margins are, and it inflates the poor sales figures. Let's have a look at those. The latest figures show 76 sold less than a sixth of what Fallout 4 did. Not good. There's also been a massive oversupply of hard copies. What's the problem with the point of a hard copy when the thing is just a cardboard disc telling yep. you to redeem an online code? Yep. And while Jesus Christ. Christ. returns a high, immediately upon release, people began asking Jesus. for the okay. refund. 76 is not on Steam, it's on Bethesda's own platform, so they have all the control. If players only played the game for a few hours, then generally they'd get their money back. However, it came out that people were sometimes getting refunds after a full 24 hours of play. Quite generous, but then word about this spread to forums. Then to Reddit, and a post got 12,000 uploads informing people that this made pretty much everyone eligible for a refund, and the comments told them exactly how to do it. Bethesda was flooded with requests for refunds. And their response? Shut it down, lads. No, no, no one gets a refund now. Everyone go home. Show's over. Robot customer service man, engage. Customers who have downloaded the game are not eligible for a refund. We apologize for the inconvenience. Die. <laughs> a few things followed. First, people got mad. Yep. One hardcore gamer even. Oh yeah, I remember this. Refund. Bang. 
<laughs> a bit of an overreaction, but probably also fair. That dude is calm. Second, the media. <laughs> Yeah, I would have quit if somebody and trashed my story like that. I would have been like, lawsuit. I ain't picking that Their up. Their inconsistent refund policy in terms of service may not be strictly legal. November 27, 2018. McLaughlin and Rathod LLP file a class action suit on behalf of customers. Media quickly picked up on that. Their main argument is that it's a sometimes unplayable game owing to its technical problems, then they're refusing refunds, and that Bethesda is engaged in a strategy to release anyway, and then slowly patch their way into a more playable state. Updates on this lawsuit is slow, so I'll keep you informed on the second channel. Ad time. Look, there's a meteor headed straight to Earth. Oh my god. We must do something. Was anyone curious enough to read about it online? Not me. Not me either. Nope. Oh no! Now people think I'm dumb and I have died a virgin. Don't let this happen to you. Get Curiosity Street. It's a streaming platform with some of the best documentaries and non-fiction from around the world. Partial nudity? Maybe if you look hard enough. But more importantly, <laughs> the most arousing thing of all, knowledge. Works for your knowledge. Own, Android, etc., etc. It works on everything, okay? Science, nature, history, tech, society. CuriosityStream.com slash Internet Historian for unlimited access to the world's free top documentaries and non-fiction series. Use the promo code Internet Historian during the sign-up process to get the first 30 days free. Then cancel any time. Wink. Pl please. Look, I need. I need sponsors. I. I bought a lifetime supply of toilet paper, thinking I was saving money, but then I left it out in the rain, and the crows got it, and now I'm back to square one. <laughs> CuriosityStream.com/slash/internetstore. Ads over. Let's rewind a little bit. Ah. All our fans made their pre-orders, and the most dedicated pre-ordered the Power Armor Edition. Wow. It came with a helmet. <laughs> map, army toys, and a genuine West Tech canvas bag. Fast forward to the release. And customers notice that their precious bags, which are supposed to be made of the finest canvas and lamb, look a bit different. In fact, it looks like a carry bag the real bag should come in. Do they really just advertise one thing and deliver another? Can't do that. So there was a surge of backlash, and people began emailing Bethesda, asking for refunds, asking for answers. By this point, customer service is absolutely over it. They are done with the facade, and they send this email in response. Hello. We are sorry that you aren't happy with the bag. The bag shown in the media was a prototype and was too expensive to make. We aren't planning on doing anything about it. That's yep. the whole email. Staff at Bethesda aren't even hiding their contempt anymore. Naturally, the internet goes wild. <laughs> Just rank grants and throwing a pizza. Wow. I mean, that's anger. That is anger. Wow. Well, I got so mad, I shaved everything off my face. Okay, guys, this is a bit of a PR nightmare. We have to quell the outrage. What do we do? Well, we've got this in-game currency. Let's just give them the minimum amount of that. Fantastic idea. Hear ye, hear ye. Anyone who paid two to three hundred dollars for the Power Armor Edition is hereby entitled to five dollars worth of in-game currency that you'll be able to spend with us. Five hundred atoms? Fuck yeah! What are you gonna do with your? People have asked me why I don't pre-order shit. Of the power armor. Whoa! What about you? Like wood laminate. Like wood laminate. Like wood laminate. <gasps> Fuck the bag. He's right. Fuck the bag. <laughs> Of course, this was Bethesda's fantasy of what would happen. What really happened is further outrage, and even the media started piling on. It even became part of that class action lawsuit from earlier. Bethesda put out a tweet apologizing for their curt customer service and gave a different excuse for why they didn't make the bags. A shortage of material, apparently. <laughs> that was quickly debunked. Because it turns out, they did make the canvas bag. Except they gave them all out. To influencers. Oh dear. 
Yeah. It's not the same one, of course, but it's sourced from that ever scarce material canvas. But what's more amusing is that it turns out there is a canvas bag in the game. If you don the postman's outfit, which of course can be yep. found at the atom shop for 700 atoms. Wow. Ooh, just short. Well, the bleating from the online community. I'm disappointed with my bag. Lawyers realized there would be trouble, so they decided to capitulate. <coughs> All right, fine. We'll make your precious fucking bag. If you want to claim it, you'll have to fill out this form with your name, personal details, address, etc., etc., and we'll ship out the bag to you in four to six months. But it doesn't quite end there, because Bethesda is known for bugs, and of course their website is a buggy mess too. Turns out all of the customer support inquiries are unsecure and open to the public. In fact, people can open and close and change them at will. Listed are details of full legal names, phone numbers, home addresses, and more. If you've requested your canvas bag, you've just been doxxed. Not knowing how to immediately fix Never the have I seen such a level of incompetence from game developers as this. This and is absurd. Is the tale of the and not only that, a company as big as Bethesda. One of the biggest in the world. Small companies like... Like, I'm trying to think of one. I, I know I've had examples recently. Like, like, like Apex. It's like they come out, you know, they're like they're not nearly as fucking big as Beth no. as Respawn isn't like, but they no. come out with Apex, right? And they have a problem with the game, and it's possibly like uh, ghosting your transactions on the store yeah. for a day. And they're like, J we recommend don't buy anything from the store right now. We'll look into it. The next day, they fucking fix it. Like Bethesda does shit. Like we don't really know how to do anything about it. Like fucking really. Well, that may take money. How long have you been making though. video games? That's the thing. It's not their inability to do shit about it. It's, it's like, they straight don't give a shit, apparently. Do we have to get up off our asses and pull our wallets out of our pockets and compensate you people for this? I don't know. Yeah, I know. Oh, kerfuffle. How could this have been so difficult? They made one for New Vegas. One last piece of merch. A rum drink. New oh. Dark. Oh, God. Three orders available in September. Shipped out on November 14th, $80 plus postage and handling. Not cheap, but in return you got a very cool boodle. Looks good on the shelf. A great conversation piece with the family over Thanksgiving. Except here's the problem. Or at least it would have been. November 14th came and went, and there was no rum. Uh, what do you do? A week later on November 21st, an email comes through. There's a delay. Things aren't up to the usual fallout standard, they say. The Which, those aren't very fucking high. All of this just works. Things aren't up to the usual fallout standard. So we'll have it for you soon. No specific date given. One week later. Nothing. Then on December 5th, another email. Good news. We start shipping on December 12th. It's been nearly three months since you pre-ordered, but as a show of good faith, we made this promotional video for you. And this is where things went from tardy to retardy. Right there. Did you catch that? That's just a regular industry bottle and a plastic shell. We paid $80 and waited a quarter of a year for a plastic shell? People were not happy with that ratio. Nothing in the marketing said that it was I didn't even know shop. about this. Super yep. premium, we were yep. God damn. And the media agreed. I hope people fucking learn from this and do not pre-order fucking people Elder Scrolls 6. Their orders. Make them make a good game to get your money, Silver dude. Silver Screen tries to convince people that it's not cheap and shitty. It actually costs us twice as much to make the plastic one than the glass one. Then what the fuck? We, we spent a hundred <laughs> hours coding the design. Convincing stuff. Right. So it arrives, just a few days before Christmas. The rum is about the quality you'd expect. Where are this? My own show. Ah. Worse is the design. The oversized lip means liquid can pour inside the shell. Hard to pour, cause how they made this damn thing. Spilled like half the shot. Very dribbly. So you're best off opening the whole thing up to prevent spilling. If you do that, there's a good chance that you'll snap the flimsy plastic. 
Any liquid will immediately ruin this cheap paper sticker. Mm -hmm. Some made their own at home and the quality was about on par. But look, if you do want a decent version of this product, there are reputable sellers of them. They're on Etsy. They're far cheaper, and they actually give a shit. Yes. Not gonna lie though, some of the memes that came out <laughs> pretty good. Now, no. many claim that this was an honest mistake. Sorry. Or that yeah, okay. were fault for misinterpreting ambiguous marketing. I disagree. All of the marketing shows other glass items. All of the mock-ups show something more akin to frosted glass than plastic. They give plenty of descriptions of the product too, and not once do they mention plastic. And they were engaged in a bunch of other tomfuckery as well. Before the product was even available, they flooded their own product reviews with a bunch of five stars. Yeah. This raised some eyebrows, and people on Reddit even called them out for it. Okay, I have something to say about that, about fake reviews. The people on Redbubble did that to our merchandise. They did that to our merch. I told them to remove it, and they said no. So I closed the Redbubble store. Yeah, Red Bubble. What the fuck is wrong with they you? They put fake reviews. Yeah, on they put fake reviews on our stuff. Don't wow. do and shit. And we got called out for it, and I told them to remove it, and they wouldn't. So I closed the Red Bubble store. Friggin' stupid, stupid stuff, man. God. Capitalism, bro. No, 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 no. That's, that's not. That's not capitalism, dude. That is pure. That is pure corporate espionage. That's not that's not even close to capitalism. Tell Capital me when. No, capitalism is when? I show you a product, I show you a product, you like it, you buy it, and you tell me what you think about it after having it for a while. That's how reviews work. Capitalism you flooding is, it with fake reviews yeah. is is not uh, that's that's criminal, dude. Capitalism is competitive prices and competitive quality. Yes. It's not fucking competitive like uh, falsification of information. Yeah, like, that's, that's pure ridiculous. falsification. And guess what? It was, and a lot of people assumed it was us. Like we told them to do that. No, mm -hmm. God annoyed I mean, the hell it's out really of me. The way of internet marketing and has been since uh, people have been doing that forever. Yeah, like if you're a company, how many, how like if you're a company and you do that, Amazon. and you do that to like a, a creator or it's someone bullshit. without without asking, I hope you go out of business because you're a piece of shit. Like, everybody who runs your company is a piece of shit. So they deleted yeah. them. You can see all this activity on the Wayback Machine. Ah, yes. Now, if they're happy to deceive people in this way, it seems silly to give them the benefit of the doubt about the glass. It's also worth quickly talking about the Bethesda merch store. Some of these items are pretty neat. That's cool. Good idea. I'll have that. Fallout 76 pound. Singular. But why is he so mad? The photography is all just slightly off. This gaudy jacket was mocked relentlessly on social media. Why is he so mad? He probably just got his Nuka and Dark and his uh, can't make it more immersive. His nylon bag and why in the middle. they just toss it on the ground? And it comes in this crumpled up toddler body bag. You're talking about hundreds of thousands of dollars in merch and you don't have an eye on Why is she wearing the size XXL? She's clearly not happy about it. But who looked at this and said, good job, print. Now that's surprising. And what the fuck? They made the bottle properly. Yeah, one of those, please. But bigger and brown. Is that so hard? Apparently. No, just, no I'm just, just, no. just keep going. <laughs> Let's get back to the game. December 2018. There are two new patches released that caused quite a stir. The good. Oh. Whoa. For PC, they include a number of quality of life improvements, including push to talk. <laughs> but was... Hey, now we know Squidward's favorite rapper. So brought in field of view sliders. Hooray! Increased stash capacity from 400 pounds to 600 pounds, and a small buff to automatic weapons. Hooray! They decreased the carry weight of bobby pins so it no longer took up 10 to 20 percent of people's inventory. Yeah. I got a box of bobby pins the other week. Yeah, that was that Instead was bullshit. Wavies. <laughs> 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 upgrades to the cap that allowed for easier construction and a bunch of bug fixes. Hooray! The bad. A whole bunch of unannounced stealth nerfs. They generally made the game grindier. 
Ammo production was decreased. Fusion cores burnt out faster. Legendary enemies spawned less frequently. On guard, I'll fuck you up. And the backlash <laughs> was significant because everybody knew why Bethesda was doing it. To the encourage atomic people shop. to use the atomic shop. And let's talk briefly about that store. Some of the prices are outrageous. A Christmas tree for $12. A Santa outfit for $20. Blue and yellow paint for $18. Oh look, $3 for the same sweater vest and slacks item imported from Fallout 4. But the biggest offense of all was the holiday emote bundle. $24 for some Christmas themed emotes. Twice the price of these games. The media agreed that these were egregious prices. But worse, they're engaged in some deceiving marketing practices too. Oh look, it's marked down half price. But it's not. It was released half price. They're artificially jacking up the price, only to then give it a fake limited time discount in order to create a sense of urgency. That's illegal. Here in Australia at least, in Canada and in the EU. Reddit quickly picked up on it's this. It's illegal here in the now, States too. But there's to reacted by scrapping the discount and just setting it, Is it really always intended price yeah it's illegal to uh it's illegal every single cd that ever released at the store came out on sale for lower than the sticker price for a limited time yeah yeah so that's basically the same thing yeah so if it's, it's illegal. illegal then i'm telling you report man, it that's america report it i guess fye needs to be reported <laughs> yeah, yeah dude, illegal that's america man well it's illegal and so many people have built their businesses and business model around not getting noticed doing illegal things in yeah. America. Yeah. Okay, it's been about 25 minutes of whining now, so I'm just going to leave it here. I didn't even get a chance to touch on the new pay to win fiasco. The new camera icon that lets you teleport, dwindling player numbers. But on the flip side, they're also adding new content and improving the game over time. Heck, No Man's Sky was a surprising comeback. So, Maybe Bethesda can do it too. <laughs> Good job, Felix. But for now, Todd returns to cryostasis. Hiding in his bunker until the bombs of outrage stop falling. And returning only when it's time to get our hopes up once again. CuriosityStream.com slash internet historian. Not many people know this, but I'm actually quite a good rap artist. <laughs> Rappist, if you will. As fast as I possibly can, in time with the scrolling. Here we go, one take. Just deal, Miles Millicant, Justin Rowling. Uh, on with Steve Rizzo, Drudders, Indigo Zero, Luke Hackle, Astatine 210, uh, fuck, Jordan Prince, uh, Dr. Tex, Pubs, Spicy Peter, Tef, Edgy Kid X, Bryce, Toiler, Ham, no, Nate Odenkirk, but Sanya Waffles, uh, Krabby. If you want to get <coughs> read by the rapist, then why don't you head over to. Uh, it's all right, bud. <laughs> it's all right. He tried. I, I can give effort where effort is due. I can I can appreciate that. Yeah. So Okay. Yeah. I've I have even less faith in Bethesda than I had before I watched this video now, and that wasn't that much at the moment anyways. So Well diminishing returns on Bethesda's products like that. I'm worried about Elder Scrolls Six now. Don't yeah, worry. I've, don't worry. Yeah, a lot. Don't worry, I'm worried it's going to take five years for it to come out. I do. I <laughs> just. I, I don't. I don't just... give a shit if it does take five years to come out. It, it should take five years to come out. Like yeah. it should actually put some goddamn fucking time into it instead of whatever the fuck they did there. Like, I don't know, man. I hope it's their main studio. It is. It. From what I understand, their main studio in Dallas. I hope they don't. And also, their fucking rush it. But and they're, also, Maryland they're gonna well. they're gonna rush it because they probably took such a big hit on this bullshit, where they fucked up. Um, Thank you, Angry Joe. Yeah, and 
I don't know, man. It's just like everybody who watches this video, listen to me. Don't fucking pre-order giant fucking limited editions of Elder Scrolls 6. I know you fucking love Skyrim. I know you fucking loved Elder Scrolls since at least Morrowind or before. Don't fucking pre-order it, man. Like, make them make a good game in order to get your money. Don't give them your money ahead of time. Pre-order culture is bullshit. It is. Bullshit. It, is. It, it is so bullshit. Is. And they try to entice you with shiny fucking shit, like canvas-ass bags and, it works. and stuff um, like that. <laughs> this shit, you know. No, well, actually, no, I will uh, say this. That's, that's not shit, at least. That's real nice. I like that. Yeah, but yeah. Just, if you're going to get this kind of stuff, get it from a company that didn't do this. Well, because why would you trust them? Well, here's the difference between what what Epic did with this and with what Bethesda did with that. Bethesda promised something and didn't deliver on it and also released a shitty game. When this came out, this was released with everything that was specified and it was, good quality. It was a good game. And it was also a good, yeah, good quality, quality and extras, it was a good game. You know? Yeah, and it was a good game. Well, it was like fucking yeah. the, the Dark Souls 3 limited edition thing I bought. I bought from a company and pre-ordered that limited edition. I broke my own rule because I trusted FromSoft. And, and from they Soft did not let delivered. me down. From yeah, Soft they did not let me down. Man. And that little, like, you know, extra couple of things I got, like the steel case and stuff, was worth it. Like, but, like, just please tell me you don't fucking trust Bethesda to pre-order an Elder Scrolls 6 $200 limited edition after you've seen this. Because I'm not. If you do, you need to talk to somebody. <laughs> like, you yeah, need some help, man. Yeah, like don't oh my god. Hey Todd, yeah, don't, hey, don't Todd. Fool. Hey. fool me once, shame on me, or shame on shame on you. Shame on fool me twice, shame on me. Yeah, exactly. Well, like shame on you twice. if they Elder fool you Scrolls twice. Online, and then this seventy six. I mean, those are two. Yeah. Big. Those are like what? Those have to be their biggest titles. They are. Well. In terms of just Bethesda, yes, those are their two biggest titles by far. Whereas, whereas id Software, which is under Bethesda's umbrella with Zen, yeah, under Zenimax, um, do the Doom game that uh, the Doom games that they've released so far, or the, and Eternal's coming out this year too, supposedly, and that looks like it's going to be amazing. We see that that's not Bethesda making that shit. No, it's so, it. Yeah, it's purely I, it's I still software. trusted software. Like I they've do too. never given me a reason to dislike them or not trust them. So, you know, like they make good ass shit. Yeah, they, they do. have for a while. I know a lot of people didn't like Doom Three, but I fucking love Doom Three. Like Doom Three was the shit, man. Well, keep in mind that was also id back when it was still under Carmack. Now that Carmack's gone, and their team has been streamlined, and they actually know. Where what direction to go? Because John Carmack said something about gaming storytelling way back when that he still abides by. Mm. Game storylines are a lot like porn plot storylines. <laughs> you don't come. You don't come for that. And I'm like, I I'm, do not agree with that. No, I don't. Well, it depends. It depends on the game. Back in the, well, back in the day, game. back when you couldn't convey much through video games, and you had to depend on the gameplay in order to do it. You know, you couldn't depend on the art, the music, or anything like that because it wasn't really anything special. But you listen, but you see what games are nowadays, and the medium has evolved into this amazing storytelling uh, storytelling medium that honestly rivals, if not surpasses, your uh, your love for movies. I can agree with that because me, when I played The Last of Us the first time and all the way through, I was spent on just how involved into this game that I got. And same thing with uh, same thing with Gears of War. Me and Zach playing through Gears 1, 2, and 3 co-op all the way through. I have never had that much fun playing a co-op game with somebody Amazing. ever in my entire life. Mm. And you see, you and there was stuff that For happened me, it's in the, the third one. Soulsborne games, yeah. man. Like yeah, exactly. the, and the fact that like they tell it in such a unique way in those games what, too. Well, like, but. it's there if you want it. The gameplay is fun enough to where you can just blast through the game if you want to and forsake all the lore. But if you're you want still going to gonna be looking at stuff as you go through it and be like, huh? Well, yeah, it's wonder interesting. what's the story behind that. It's appealing. You know, it, yeah, it's so it's, it's gripping, got this like, way of appealing things. to you that just makes you want to go, wow. Uh, I want more things and its stuff. <laughs> and again, it's like Sekiro. Sekiro, same yeah, Sekiro. thing. Sekiro. Sekiro's got more story uh, put uh, at the front for you. Like 
you know, a little more like handed to you on your yeah. plate, like uh, than Souls usually does. Yeah, Witcher. but um, like a there's Witcher, still a lot of background yeah. stuff in Sekiro as well. Like there's uh, stuff that you know you may not understand at first, but if you look hard enough, you can figure it out. And it's like, oh, uh, I see. What's just like there, also you know? got the new God of War game. The new mm. God of War game told a beautiful story, brilliant story, and had such a great setting. And but then at the same it, time, it's like it really depends on the game because. Not everybody plays games. No, no. Like for, not not all games are games that you play for a story. It's a story is just a potential thing that you can do really great things with in video games nowadays. But it's like there's still stuff like Overwatch, Rainbow Six Siege, you know. Like, yeah, uh, yeah. Where where Fortnite, the gameplay Fortnite, Apex, is, you know. Yeah, it's like story's not is, important there, but it's fun. Like, yeah, so. it's fun to have like little lore nuggets here and there, but not. But it's not. I still I'm, wish Overwatch would tell us a lot more about. Overwatch. But, it's a yeah. it's a it's a brilliant setup. They just haven't gone through the effort of fleshing it out. Yeah, Jeff, Jesus, come on, Jeff, Jeff Kaplan, you some bitch. But seems like such a nice guy. Just tell yeah. us your secrets. <laughs> eh, to me, he he has a nice presentation, but in all honesty, I I I get the the feeling that behind the scenes, he's much like how he looks. He's a dick nose. I don't know, maybe, but who knows? Eh, well. If Hopefully Jeff, not. Yeah, Jeff Kaplan. If I ever meet you in real life, I hope you don't see this. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I. But yeah, um, this was the fall of '76 by Internet Historian. This was a fun video to watch because it's always fun to watch games break. I, I like because we watched a mini lad video where game physics break and all that, and it was absolutely hilarious. And it's, seeing this, it's just like yeah, it's fun to watch the game break. It's but it's infuriating to see how badly this company handled this entire I thing. Agree. Yes, it, and just it's how badly they treated their fans. It sucks to see them treat people like shit because I mean, it's like they're almost making EA look kind of good in this. Ooh, situation. that's that's an insult. Yeah, favorite, know, right. Yeah, like that's my favorite game series ever. Yeah, by far it's not even. Well, fun. you played Skyrim so much. I played it for like four years straight. Yeah. Much. It's because That's why I missed out on a bunch of other games. Too busy modding and playing Skyrim. But that was but that was what you wanted. That to was do. me, wanted me with World of Warcraft. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, and it really just fucks with me. To I think still put a lot in Skyrim too. So. What video games are evolving into, and what could potentially happen to that series uh, is worrisome. I, I agree that I don't know if I would pre-order it. I do have hope. That Elder Scrolls Six. Fingers crossed. Be... Well, hey, hold on. Let me do, let me see if I can do the the quadro the uh, actually the uh, quinta cross. Uh, yeah, there we go. Fingers Basically, crossed with the Elder Scrolls Six. Fingers the thing. Fucking cross. I, and toes and toes. I have a little bit of faith that eventually the Elder Scrolls Six will be massively worth playing. Yes, but I don't have that much hope that on release it will be worth getting. Yeah, because at this point Bethesda. they've given me they they've just took my faith and just they've kicked it in the nuts too many times and and um, so poured kerosene on it and set it ablaze. Yeah, it's yeah. it's not there anymore. Um, well, seeing how they treated people with this, I mean, it's just. But at least I know that after that game releases and it's been out for a good amount of time, the modding community is going to fix what they fucked up. Yeah, for sure. And it'll eventually be something definitely worth playing. So mm-hmm. there's at least that. As long as something stupid doesn't happen and it just gets completely canceled, you know. If it does, I'm sure eventually, like, the, the uh, Elder Scrolls community will make a new sequel themselves. Because that's usually what people do, you know. Mm-hmm. It's like, if it gets uh, to the point um, that it gets too much further into the future, I have a feeling after those uh, Black Mesa dudes finish that project... They're going to be like, fuck it, why don't we make Half-Life 3? <laughs> no, I'm all for that. I am all for that. As long as it isn't Hunt Down the Freeman... Oh, that game was... I just want Morrowind and Oblivion remastered, re-released to where they're... Like, and it's hard for me to It would be, be nice this, to play those on like, the Skyrim. Morrowind is so unplayable in its original form. I've tried to go back and play it, and I'm just like, fuck this. I agree with well, that. Well, I, I, I don't like the sword whiffing. I, like, I, you know, I, I don't like it. swinging my sword clearly where it would hit something and it rolling a dice, dice for it. Yeah, if I wanted to roll the dice, I'd be playing Dragon Age. Well, so, well like. my, okay, they have actually, they're actually working on uh, mods, Sky Oblivion and Sky Wind. Yeah, and that's great. I'm just saying, bring it to us. 
on a on a system, not just on PC where you have to download it. But that's know. but you see that's the problem though. You see PC, you can get away with that. Consoles they lock out a lot of a lot of mods and stuff that you think can what he's do. saying is Remaster is bethesda well, no, bethesda yeah. no, needs Bethesda's to not do gonna that. do that man bethesda yeah. they don't like going back they don't like they that. like money wait they, wait 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 bethesda doesn't like going back if they were really skyrim like 19 different times on 19 yeah. that's not going back no no but no that's not going that's back though in place, that's place. running in place yeah. Yeah, that's that's sidestepping that's lateral thinking that's you pretty much just like going like you know running for running for it oh we reached a good point here. It's nice and warm. Which is what they've done, yeah. you know. And I did buy it again for the Switch. But, <laughs> but that's okay. No, but, uh, if it if it's a game yeah. you enjoy, I bought it. I bought it on PlayStation okay. Three originally, and I did buy it again for PC. So I mean, I bought it for PC. Well, that just shows you how Xbox good of a game it is. Xbox One, the Switch. I, I've got it for everything. Honestly, Xbox. man, what we just need to do is set it up to where you can play. You can play Morrowind or Skywind and Sky Oblivion. You know the Morrowind and, and Oblivion through the through uh, through the Skyrim engine. Yeah, and have that and just have it set up to where you can play that with a controller because which would I, be wicked. I'm not against that at all. Yeah, what I'm just saying is like man, you just wish they would they would take I mean, a chance on that. What would, what is what is the downfall of that? Are people gonna bitch about that if you fuck it up? Yeah, they will. But if you do it right. You, I'm talking to you, Bethesda. Damn it! You will make so much money, and if that is your primary concern, that's why you don't care to give refunds and help out your fans. At least give them something that they like, and they will give you that money. As I always say, dude, <laughs> it's like all you have to do to get people to buy your fucking game. Like they they try all this stuff all the time, like all this extra stuff they try to throw in. And it's like, oh, if we do this, maybe they'll buy our game. It's like all you got to do is make the game not suck, dude. Uh, yeah, it's I, like make a good game, people will give you their money. I'm of the same opinion, man. Make a good movie, people will give you their money. Exactly. Make a, write a good book, people will give you their money. Like, yeah, that's how it fucking yeah. works, man. Yeah. Ah, uh, all right. Well, we got to move on. <laughs> This was a hell of a video, The Fall of 76 by Internet Historian. Check out the original video in the link down below. I mean, Internet Historian does some awesome stuff. He's got a video on Fire Festival that's awesome. He's also got a video on DashCon that's absolutely hilarious. I, I request checking him out big time. And, yeah, I guess until next time, everybody, uh, that's going to do it for this. And uh, we will see you all in the next one. Until then, I'm Nate. I'm Nick. I'm Chad. And we will see you then. Peace out. Almost heaven, West Virginia. <laughs>